I want to play Confession. We haven't played that in a long time. And I want all the guys on the show to start this off by giving a confession. I want you to think about it. Something that you would confess as if you would to your own priest. Something you give away. Chris, first of all, what do we got in the prize? Okay. I have Planet Terror signed by Robert Rodriguez. That's a pretty good price. Damn good. You like Planet Terror? Yeah, half of a Grindhouse feature. This part of the Grindhouse feature, though, don't you think? I actually went and saw that in a movie, and a lot of people got up and walked out at Planet Terror thing, and that was the end of it. And I was fucking cracking up. I saw it twice, and I saw the Grindhouse whole thing. Yeah, people, both movies, people just fucking walked out. Like, Where are you going? Death Proof's coming up! I didn't fucking yell out to them. They're on their own. I'm never going to stop with fucking Rube in the Midway. That's their fucking business. That's their fault. I was a little buzzed. Um... I went out and saw Rufus Wainwright last night, Jay Moore's favorite performing artist of all time. Warm night when I leave. I'm in there enjoying music for two hours. I go back outside, I'm being snowed on. I, it was madness last night. It was hailing in Queens. I don't know if it was hailing in the city. It ended up hailing over here, too. It's, it's, it's April 15th. This, there shouldn't be hail in New York City right now. They explain it today on the news that somehow the earth is out of... It's just fucking rolling away from the sun. Oh, and we're out of the regular gravitational orbit that we're supposed to be in. They're all going to fucking die. Not necessarily. <laughs> we're just going to have whack because sometimes it'll roll back and forth. They explain it like this. The earth right now is like a bowling ball rolled by a child. So it's going back and forth in the lane. As long as we stay out of the gutter, we're fine. Play me the confession thing. We don't have an opening for it? No, we have some nice confession music. Mm. I want you guys to give me a confession. And I want the listeners in on this, too. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Something... No, do we? Who are our interns today? Howard and then a couple of the... Uh, a couple of the Raw Dog interns came down to hang out and help a out today. A couple of you. Didn't Chris... Chris... Yes, Chris is hanging out. And... And just another intern. Someone's willing to intern from you and you don't learn their name. Now you're typing. It's very last Instead of being in a conversation. I want them to think of a confession, too. Something that they've done before. Just stop pointing. Don't you help, Shelby. If someone calls on you, but right now we don't trust your judgment. We think of you as Captain Freeze Up from the warm-up yesterday. If there's a problem, stare. Dear Headlights. Fulbio and Chris are here. That can't be a name. Fulbio, yeah. I want them, Howard, explain to them they're going to have a confession, too. All right, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Best confession. We'll get the prize. Now, remember, for the people calling in, we don't necessarily even know who they are. So they're going to be able to just say what they need to say without anyone knowing. This isn't confessional music. I know you haven't been in the church much. No. You're playing some nice music, but it's not confessional church music. Chris Stanley, I want you to start this off. Okay. What is your confession? All right. It's been, I don't know, 20 years at least. You don't have to even say okay. since your first confession. I gave, um, I gave a girlfriend in college, I gave her chlamydia. <laughs> He's disgusting. Never, never, I never told her, and then I just broke up with, like, I broke up with, I got, first of all, I knew I had First chlamydia. of all, what are you, a fucking sailor? <laughs> <laughs> and this was back in 2001, and they still were putting the thing inside, like, they put the Q-tip inside the penis. Ah, for the so you didn't want it. Yeah, exactly. Why didn't you put a fucking condom on? I don't, come on, man, I'm in college, and I don't like using condoms. Listen but there. you know you're going to make somebody get chlamydia. Yeah. Yeah. That's that fucking disgusting. Makes me a bad person. Yeah. All right, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. We know we have to beat chlamydia. Um, and I, didn't, I didn't tell her about it afterwards. Like, I still, like, maybe she's she listening. she could have got it from anywhere. Yeah. And, like, if she's listening now, she'd know. If she's a listener now, she's such a low life, she deserves <laughs> chlamydia. <laughs> all right, Shelby. And this, the music is terrible on this. We're not all backed out. You need some nice church organ music, but you've got to beat that. Well, when I was a senior in high school, I wanted to uh, get off of work 
for spring break. I was already off for school. I wanted to get off from the job I had. So I lied and told my boss that my grandmother had died when in reality she had passed away about 10 years earlier. All right, see, here's the thing. You're supposed to say something awful, not something anyone would do at any day. Do you not have anything in your past that you're good and ashamed of? Ashamed of? Yes. Who wouldn't say my grandmother died? That's why I could. I would go down this hall and tell the bosses that today. <laughs> I gave a girl an STD, oh. lied about it, and I fucking carried that around for years. Like I, I, thought, I made her think she was a slut, you know? You know, let me just say this. Your confession, while hideous... <laughs> Is an actual confession. I've never fucking told. I've told people I've had chlamydia before mm -hmm. in the past, but I never said that. You I've, were a carrier. Yeah, I've given it out. All right, here's John in Maryland. You're on the Ron and Fez show. Hey, Ron and Fez. Glad to hear you. I used to listen to you in Florida. But the deal is this. Back when I was in college, I once got one of those little disputes over a parking space. I was sitting with my uh, turn signal on waiting for a space to clear. And the person took a long time. They finally pulled out, and another guy tried to jump the spot. So we had words, and I wound up getting the spot. I went into class. When I came back out, he had left this huge loogie on my car window. So I figured he's probably still here. I went and found his car, and I had a little knife in my, uh, my book bag, and I slid his tire. I just have to say this. I don't think this is a confession as well as a person saying that they did the right thing. I mean, someone spits on your car and thinks you're not going to retaliate. No, it doesn't go that way. That counts as revenge. Yeah. Yours doesn't even count as a, as a sin. Uh, Dan in Binghamton, what is your confession? Uh, well, I have a confession that will personally affect the show. Um, I'm actually Chris Stanley. Here's Richie in the Bronx. Richie. All right. I used to teach uh, special ed adults, mentally retarded, couldn't talk, and these guys would punch you, kick you, poop on you at all nine yards. Right. One night we're getting high and we're like, you know what? We should. We got to figure out a way to get back at these guys without, uh, you know, leaving a mark because you could go to jail for that. So we ended up giving them cock shots, and uh, you know, and would tell them let's go to the bathroom and wash our hands, and we'd give them a cock shot, and they'd be down on the floor in pain. No mark left and uh, no jail time for me. Richie, this is such a horrible story Jesus. that I'm actually uh, I'm alarmed and disturbed by it. I'm going to put you in um, to the finals here. Richie in the Bronx, take his number. But that's that's an awful one. That's like fucking torture. Even feeling that you need to get even with a special needs person. Terrible. Uh, Howard makes sure line four. We take his number. He's definitely a finalist. Uh, Greg in Kansas, what do you have, buddy? Hey, so about three years ago when I was in grad school, I ended up cheating on my girlfriend with her sister and uh, then ended up cheating on her again with her mom. Yeah, that's a forum letter. That's nothing to be ashamed of. You actually should write that into the penthouse in 1982. I'm almost hard right now. That I just that's said it. disgusting. <laughs> Another man made you hard. <laughs> um... Hey, Hi, uh, fellas. Hey, John, what do you got? Well, I don't know, probably about the age of 15 or 16 years old, I used to work at a gas station, and they had the big walk-in coolers, you know, where you would just get a drink from. And, uh, you know, I had to stop that cooler. So I found that if I uh, laid on the floor and scooted my head all the way up to the front, when the girls would come in and pick their drinks, I could look up their skirt and jerk off while I was doing it. It's kind of rough. Yeah, I, just, I don't think it's up there with chlamydia or uh, abuse of a special needs person. Uh, who are our two interns today? Howard and Fulbio on the phones right now. Fulbio. Fulbio. So we don't have two from the Comedy Channel. One's late. Okay. That's Comedy Channel. That's Raw Dog. Uh, we actually have all of us here. Okay, Jesus. Sorry, Christ. my bad. I love, I love The phones are blowing up on me. Sorry. I understand, but that's the fucking job, Howard. Uh, Bill in Rockland, you're on the Run of Fez show. <laughs> Bill, we got you. Let's go to Mike in Philly. Mike, do it up right hey. for Philly. What's your confession? Well, when I was a kid, my parents had me stay with my grandma for a while because I couldn't get along with my brothers and sisters and stuff when I was a bad kid. And, uh, 
embarrassing. I, I used to masturbate. I was, I was a kid. I used to masturbate in my grandmother's bed while she was sleeping next to me. I want to put that in the finals. Christ. <laughs> That's horrible. That's hey. actually horrible on many different levels. And what would he do with the semen? I mean, Let's not... <laughs> you know what? You don't need those details. Yeah, the fact that you even want to know that <laughs> is why you ended up with chlamydia. Yeah. <laughs> What'd you do with the jizz? Was it Seriously. a dry jerk? He was next or to his what? grandmother. Can I tell you something? Yeah. You got the dick of a Portuguese sailor. <laughs> don't you sit in judgment of anyone else. Are you facing her? Facing away? How, what, what, what down here? Uh, here's uh, Mark in Long Island. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah, uh, about, I want to say like 20, 25 years ago, I was dating this girl. And uh, her father was a real douchebag and everything towards me. Yeah. So one evening, buddy's mind, we went out drinking, and we all peed in Dixie, you know, big uh, Dixie cups, and we poured it in the vent of his Mustang. So for the life of his fucking car, you know, his car smelled like urine. I mean, this guy spent money trying to fix everything, the blower, everything else, and he just could not get the piss stain smell out of it. I don't have anything uh, I don't even have anything to do with this one. You know what I mean? Like it's revenge. It's too normal. It's too normal. It's not like he masturbated in his grandmother's bed with her sleeping or abused <laughs> special needs people, which is alarming and horrible. That, and if I wish I was in the FBI so I could hunt that guy down. That's mean that's expose on like a fucking news channel. Yeah, I wish I had a news channel right now. We actually pissed in a bottle and tried to get a kid to drink it in middle school, and then he, like, was on it's to us. It's not your time, dude. You fucking came in with your lame-ass one that even Chris laughed at. And now you're fucking coming up with some middle school, you know, your fucking gay sex from middle school. All right? That's between you and your therapist. This is about dealing with... <laughs> this is like horrible shit. Did you hear what yeah. happened? I'm giving people STDs and not telling them about it. Some guy is fucking <laughs> just having... Got, beating up special needs people for fun. And then this other man's masturbating next to his grandmother. This is confessions. Yeah. This isn't fun kid talk from Cub Scouts. Christ. All right, send him one of the interns. So we got... All right, Fulbio, come on right, in. Fulbio. It's going to take him an hour to get here? Is that the Fulbio angle? Fulbio, sprint into the room. There he goes. I really like him. He's fast. I can, I can hear him. Fulvio is very, very fast. Good to meet you, man. Thanks for coming down to help out today. What's going on, guys? You look fucking great in the shirt. You're ripped, dude. You got thank a nice, you, you. nice earring, your whole thing. You got, you got like a backstreet beard. I'm liking your whole look. You understand what the game is, right? It's uh, confessions. All right. Do you have something that you've kept to yourself that you're ashamed of but would feel better if you put it out there. All right. Uh, excuse me a second. Let me think about something. You've had all this time, for Fulvio. All right. If you don't um, have it, we'll put you right. back in the intern hell. <laughs> all right. So you want me to tell you one of like my worst stories? Yeah, whatever yeah. you have. Right. It's a confession. All right, cool, cool. So uh, I wouldn't say it's that, that bad, but all right. So I was talking the other day with uh, Aaron upstairs about losing virginities and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. Mine's a little different. Uh, we pretty much, I was with my cousin. I was. What's his probably, name? His name is Gio. Okay. I was young at the time. I was probably like in middle school, like seventh grade, I want to say. 12, 13. And uh, yeah, my older cousin, he was like 22 years old. He, we were actually in Dominican Republic at the time, so he calls me. He, he went out earlier, and then he calls me like around one in the morning. I'm upstairs in his apartment. He calls me. He's like, hey, man. Get ready, wash your cock. I got two bitches down here for us. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, oh shit, man, I think it's going down. I tell him, because Jew was his younger brother. Yeah. So I tell him, all right, man, I think it's going to go down. <laughs> so he hops in one shower, hop in the other one. We do our thing, we go downstairs, and then I'm like, you know, nervous and shit shaking. He's like, all right, man, it's gonna go down. I'm gonna leave you. I'm gonna drop you off at the motel, and you guys are gonna, <laughs> you guys are gonna do your thing. So. Jill takes a bed, I take the bathroom, we do our thing, we switch. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, man, but uh, it was uh, good. See, here's the thing, though. Have you ever met Norris, my intern? Yes. Oh, no. She's a beautiful Dominican girl. I don't want you anywhere near her, but she's a good girl. And here, she would be perfect for her. You know, I would like to find a nice Dominican boy. But the word nice is what I'm talking about. <laughs> He's on the watch list with who, kid? Every NBA player oh, yeah. that comes in here. Yeah. And there's some other guys he says hi to. I don't know his name, but he's on the watch list, too. All right. 
All right. <laughs> Yours is better than Shelby's. Yeah. But it cost you a lovely date with a good girl that you could have a wonderful... Hey, uh, man, what, what, what happened here stays in here. Don't, don't. <laughs> no, we're no. standing in front of microphones. It's being recorded. Multiple yeah. countries. Okay. All right, good Sorry. job. All right. Good job. Way to be honest. Unlike Shelby, at least you have something to confess. The weirdest part of that is what 22-year-old cousin worries about a 7th grader and says to him, Wash your cock. You're 12, right? Be on. I think things in DR are a little bit weirder than we yeah, thought. Yeah, they are. When you have to tell someone sp specifically, <laughs> wash your cock. If you're going to be with a prostitute, wash your dick. Oh, God. <laughs> Scott, Wisconsin, what do you got? Yeah. So, my wife wasn't putting out for quite a while, and I got kind of pissed off at her. So, I was in the bathroom scrapping a load, and yeah. I came, came all over her toothbrush and let her brush her teeth with it. Yeah, that's between you and her. I mean, what do you, you know? Again, revenge. No, I don't even think it's revenge. I mean, she's going to suck a dick or she's going to fucking brush her teeth with it. Who cares at that point? You know? This isn't like fucking Shelby and his goddamn homoerotic fucking fourth grade games. Uh, Tony, Chicago. Hey, Ronnie, Ronnie. Um, yeah, I had a real bitch for a boss. So I thought uh, she took off once for lunch, left her lunch on the desk. So I pissed in her pop and came on her sandwich. To me, and that's really it. fucking weird when you can't stand up to someone and you gotta do shit like that. Like, what woman boss couldn't you fucking, you know, just yell at? Yeah, right. All right, so you hate this person so much that we're like, why? Then fucking leave the job of this woman that you're fucking. Or call her a fucking name, something. <laughs> but to fucking do what I consider a Shelby. You know, because I'm always going like this. I'm always opening the water and going, did Shelby come in here? Is that oh. is a little fucking game. Like, Ron, check that for a semen. That's when this guy gives you a pound, he puts his fucking middle finger out. I don't get it. It's like saying, fuck you. I it's thought a it was, fuck you pound. I thought it was going to be, this is nice. We're giving him a pound. This is positive. Mm -hmm. No, fuck me. Not Shelby. Fuck you, Shelby. One time when we were in third grade, we peed in a kid's mouth and told him it was pop. You make me. You know something? You are fucking Joe Buck right now to me. See you in game six. That's what he said a couple years ago. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. Best announcer. It's the best announcer. He is. He is. He is. You were the fucking best announcer yesterday when you shit your pants doing the warm up, and Chris had to come finish out for you. <laughs> By the way, I can't think of a more embarrassing thing than having assignment. And having another guy have to swing in and finish the assignment for you. I finished. I finished strong. You had him applauding when I came into the room. Oh, it was a fucking madhouse. In yeah. There. And seconds later, we had tears. Look, this is John from Mass. I'd like to hear a confession from somebody who we kind of know like this. Hey, John. Oh, he's gone. Oh, oh, God. He panicked as I said his name. Hey, Dave in New York, what's your confession? Yeah. I got a good confession. Yeah. I got in a bad car accident, busted up my hips, and I got out of rehab. I was on some wicked good painkillers. Mm -hmm. Best friend of mine ended up stealing a couple of them. Wouldn't admit to it. I was constipated for about a week from taking these painkillers. I went and took an upper decker in his bathroom just to get revenge on him. Never admitted to it, but he never admitted to stealing the pills either. <laughs> Yeah, I don't like the non-confrontational type of stuff. You know what I mean? I mean, it always, I feel like I'm talking to a wimp. You have it It's like you have a secret that no one else knows about, and they don't even realize that it got yeah. done. How does it, it even get into them? It's a weird psychological thing, you know? It's, yeah. Like, I mean, I could say twice I've kept Chris out of getting a promotion. What? <sighs> I just confess that this should be a safety place. It's, it's still. But you know why I did it, right? Why? I didn't want you to get more money. Well, uh, why can't I get I more? thought you would change. <laughs> For the better. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know, but that's still change. And I'm not I'm not comfortable with change, even good change. Adam, you're on the run of Fez show. Uh, yes, uh, this is something I did to my wife back when we were dating. Uh, she told me she had no sense of smell or taste. I didn't believe her, so one day I bought her a box of milk duds and put a piece of cat shit in it. She ate the box, never knew the difference. She's not these weird fucking... That's your wife. Like wimp terrorists. This candy has a different texture. <laughs> Scott and Charlotte, what's your say? Hey, hey Ron, I uh, appreciate you doing this. This is something that's been bothering me for years, so I've got to get this off my chest. Good. So, uh, yeah, 
back just over 20 years ago, uh, me and uh, I was in high school, and me and my girlfriend, we were uh, we were upstairs in my parents' house doing it. And once I finished, of course, I, I was a, it was a pull and pray type situation. Yeah. And I didn't know where the cum went. I couldn't find it. And so we thought, oh, well, you know, whatever. We just start watching the TV. Well, a little bit later, uh, I look up on the wall, and there was something like sort of dripping down the wall. And I didn't, it didn't occur to me that that could be my cum. So I, I looked at it and was trying to figure it out. And then I called my mom into the room. I was like, Mom, you know, what is this? And she puts her hand in it, and she goes to smell it. And she's like, I don't know what that is. And we blamed it on the dog. And as soon as my mom touched it and put it to her nose, it, it, it flashed in my head, oh, my God, that's my cum. And my mom just smelled my cum. So that's my confession. I, I feel really I can't bad about it. I believe that you don't do a show with Chris Stanley. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand the people who used to do this, that. You know what I mean? Like that guy I liked a lot because it was an accident. <laughs> and it involved his mom. I like that. All right, who are our other interns today? All right, Howard and Chris. All right, let's send Chris in here. All right, Chris, coming in the studio immediately. Who was, was the it? other intern? That was Fulbio before. It's going to be tough to be Fulbio. I mean, had, he had the... I'm not sure those were prostitutes he was having sex with at 12 year old. They were just Dominican, nice Dominican girls. He causes himself a very nice relationship. Howard, how are you, my friend? Right, here comes Chris. Uh, oh, this is Chris. Yes. Chris, you're an intern for Raw Dog, right? Yep. What do you normally do for them? Uh, sort through old interviews, isolate clips for promos. So this is your first day actually doing radio? Yes. I mean, this is what you want to do as an intern. You yeah. know what I mean? Radio. Yep. Not like, oh, let me go grab some clips. You're in the right spot. This yeah. is your place right now. It's confessions. What do you want to confess? Um, oof. I used to work in restaurants years ago, and... Mm. Uh, when a customer complained about their order, I usually fucked with their food. So, one time, I uh, a customer sent back a chicken salad several times, and I got so pissed, I jizzed in her blue cheese dressing. Oh. Why would you do that? I was pissed. I had a bad day. But when you're when you're jerking off, what were you thinking of? Uh, the really hot waitress I wanted to bang at the time. Oh, How long did it take you to fuck? Minutes. I'm a quick shooter. <laughs> okay. Oh no. Okay. There's a weirdness out there of people who, rather than telling people how unhappy they are, would rather jizz on the food. <laughs> I, don't think I mean, I'm... it's a very common thing, it sounds like. I've never come in revenge, anger. I mean, I've... i got to agree with you. Other, you know, you never think, I'm going to do something horrible. Here's my seat. <laughs> Here's my potential children. A nice revenge batch. <laughs> yeah. I had, a, I had him with a revenge batch. All right, you got to pick... Uh, oh, well, we got to do Howard now, and then we'll pick... No, sit here for a second, and then one of you guys will get the Intern Championship Award. By the way, welcome to radio. I Thank wish you, you would have been here a long time instead of grabbing old interview clips. So I've been doing be... uh, podcasting for a while, so this is like first dose of real radio, so this wow. is pretty cool. Wow, so you should have hooked up with us. You know, we give our, our interns a lot of mic time. We're the only show that does that. Well, that's and cool. you know why? It's love for the future. What's your podcast about? Uh, we are uh, similar to jizzing you guys. Jizzing and stuff, just jizzing and different things? Yeah, jizzing and stuff. Uh, well, <laughs> Chris's show, High Society Radio, is part of More Like Radio, which is a show that, which is a network that I help run as well. Oh, you're a co-worker. You, did you know this was a co-worker of yours? Yep, yeah, morelikeradio.com. Yeah. Did you know this stuff yeah. before this? Why yeah. don't you introduce that? What's your podcast? I want you to plug it. My podcast name is Brain Stew Radio. We Brain are Stew. Friday nights from 8 to 10. See? No, here's the thing. If you interned for us, you'd be able to plug that all the time. All right, Chose Howard? the wrong department. Yeah, you really did. You really did. Because I hate when I see these interns come in and they don't get to work on a radio show. That's why I always feel sorry for they them. They hang out on the computers and on Facebook sometimes. I see a lot of them in the... In line, I call it the halls. The halls. Um, Howard, mm -hmm. you heard these two raw dog guys. Yeah. They came out at strong, fast... What are you I'm trying to figure us? out which one is better. Because you're a veteran. Yeah, I know. I'm so trying to figure out which one is better. You might have fucking... Um, uh, Bang to Hooker in Amsterdam is one. Well, that's something to be... Then, uh, yeah, yeah, and that's, not that's why I'm not I mean, even thinking. Did you kill her after? I mean, is this... No, What was the Sean Penn movie where they all raped the... Uh, oh, Jesus. I was... Tell you guys? Fast Times? Yeah, it was Fast Times. <laughs> what? So you don't have anything, Howard? I... Uh, 
Yeah, I do. I it was it's pretty much along the lines of his thing with the jizzing and the stuff like that. We had this one shitty manager of this place that I worked at where he would always use the same uh like cup from this like big gulp sort of thing and I knew I was leaving within like the week or so. So I pretty much just engulfed my balls and asshole all over his Used cup and decided right, not here's to tell the him problem. about it. But I, I know you've gotten anyway. me water before. Yeah, and no. I know I'm not the easiest guy to get along with. I don't know this story. Chris. Completely untainted by my taint. No more water from Howard. Chris, who would you give in turn of the day to? Fulbio. Fulbio for yeah, his crazy Dominican Republic story. He's got a crazy story. Then. What do you? How about you, Shelby? I'd give it to Chris. This is kind of so disgusting to me. Vile. And I'm going to throw mine away. I'm not going to vote for any of these people. So, the Raw Dog guys beat Howard today. Yeah, I, I... There, You both are tied for first. Whoever jizzles on each other first <laughs> is the champion of it all. All right, your podcast is what again? Brain Stew Radio. Friday nights, 8 to 10. Friday nights, 8 to 10. Boom. Thanks for being on with us, Chris. Thank you, sir. I like these Raw Dog kids. They seem like they got a lot of get up and go about them. They're they go-getters. Both come in here. Yeah, they're go-getters. They go after it. I mean, they run. I, they ran into the studio. Yeah, they see the future what it is, and they go for it. Um, it says, it "says you're on the run of Fez show." Yeah, when I was 19, I was homeless, so uh, I let an old guy fill me up so I'd have a place to stay for a couple of weeks. So every night he felt yep. Yeah, it was for a good couple of weeks. A uh, couple nights break in there, but uh, yeah. Was it under or over the clothes? Over the clothes. He tried going like in my waistband once, and I did that whole butt out thing, like getting away from him. <laughs> Very descriptive. All right, you're going into the finals. Let himself get felled up so he can have a goddamn warm place to sleep. It's understandable. Shelby now lives in that world. <laughs> he let fucking Joe Buck finger his asshole. Um, Ben in Illinois, you're on the Run of Fez show. Yeah, when I was uh, little, we used to have a big family Easter egg hunt, and I got caught on video sneaking up behind my retarded cousin and stealing the eggs out of his basket and putting them into mine. All right, now this is a good story. You're going in. Now, when you say retarded, do you actually mean your cousin with special needs? Yes, yes. Okay. No, you're going in. That's a good confession. So, you know, getting fouled up so you have a place to stay. Stealing a special needs guy's Easter egg. Or beating them up out of anger. These are all our finalists. Um, Mark, you're on the run of fish. Uh, John, John in Virginia. What do you got, buddy? A uh, place I used to work, we'd take turns getting donuts on Friday, and we had this real heavy set guy who would, throughout the day, just eat all the donuts. So by lunchtime, you know, most of the donuts were gone. So one day, uh, we took some X Flax and crunched them up and put them on all the donuts, and we had our own donuts that we ate. And the thing is, the guy got really, really sick because we used about 10 X Flaxes and he ate them all. <laughs> Dan in Texas, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, Ron, listen, I got a confession that I'm trying to work through. All right. Um, it was Christmas of last year. My mother-in-law was coming in from out of town. And I have a very difficult relationship with her. Well, as we were waiting for her to arrive from the airport, my wife packed and said, listen, can you run to Walgreens and get some fried onions before my mother gets here? So I said, sure. So I get in my car, and I'm driving down the street. And lo and behold, this dog runs into the middle of the road, and I hit the dog. I was in a hurry, so I did continue to Walgreens. I felt terrible because I'm an animal lover. Right. Regardless, I go to Walgreens, make the purchase, I get back home, and sure enough, my mother-in-law had arrived from the airport. She was on the couch crying as my wife was consoling her. And I said, what is going on? What is the problem? Apparently, my mother-in-law had seen me hit this dog in the road, but she didn't know it was me because she doesn't know my car. She came out of town. It was a year or so before she even came in there. So all this guilt and depression I felt from hitting this dog, all of a sudden I started feeling really good about it because it ruined her Christmas and made her feel miserable. I still have some residual guilt. I feel better that I told you my story. So he hit a dog, but he felt better because his mother-in-law saw it take place. I mean, I think I, I would have said yes if he just ran over a dog and felt bad about it, but the fact that he later felt good, that takes him out of the running for me. Um, here's our buddy Fuck. This should be interesting. What do you got, Fuck? 
Oh, hey, buddies. Um, there's a there's a couple I can't even fucking begin to tell you, but I'm gonna give you one uh, right in the right in the middle, I guess. Um, we're uh, we're all fucking we're all cooked up one night and drinking, and um, I watched these two kids attempt to steal pot from my buddy. Right. Uh, they were we were there having a party out in Brooklyn, and these two kids that we didn't really know. Um, so they eventually pass out. Uh, the one kid uh, he's sleeping in my friend's room. Um, on his stomach, so I took a coat hanger and shoved it up his ass, and uh, did so numerous times. He kept waking up, and I would run away and then run back and do it again. And um, the next morning, he had no idea what had happened, and it, he stepped on my Clarks, and I put his head through a kitchen cabinet for doing that. <laughs> and I felt absolutely no guilt at all. Well, I'm going to put you in the finals out of fear, <laughs> out of just. <laughs> Pure fear and nothing up. Fuck goes into the finals. The fuck's in there. Uh, here's Adam in Missouri. You're on the Run of Fest show. Yeah, I was uh, like when I was 17, I was staying at my grandparents' house. Yeah. And I was taking care of myself. My grandma caught me. And uh, she was all, you know, I was like, don't, don't tell nobody. Don't tell, don't tell, don't tell. And then she did the, you don't tell if I don't tell. And she blew me. No, nah, that's not even a true story. You're lying. You're li- no, I'm not. You're t- <laughs> no way that your grandmother wanted to blow you, dude. I didn't. All right, whatever. You're just trying to fucking get a prize. He wants that Planned Terror signed by Robert Rodriguez. Sure, it's a hell of a prize. It's awesome. I guess I'd like to do it, too. Hey, Here's uh, Phil. Phil, you're on the Ron Fez show. How you doing, Phil? Hey, Ronnie, what's going on? Good. When I was in the military, uh, you know, I used to take chicks back to their apartment. We'd fool around a little bit. And then when they passed out, I used to rummage through their purse to see if I could grab some extra cash out of it. Yeah. Now, where were you stationed at at the time? <laughs> Texas. Yeah. I'll, keep it, I'll keep it like that. Yeah, just say that you used to date and rob girls in Texas. I said the finals for that. <laughs> I mean, that's some low shit. <laughs> you know? Part- particularly while you're wearing the stars and bars. I mean, that's probably why he was banging them anyway. Um, you know, you hear some of this stuff. Uh, eight goes into the finals, too, Howard. Howard's like almost too nice to even have a good confession. One and two all go into the finals. Boy, Howard's in the weeds in there today, huh? Yeah, he is. You give him like a big, you know, like, let's see if you can pull this off. In the meantime, look at Shelby over there just sitting and watching the fucking show. I don't have a phone screen thing over here. Yeah, you you can get up and move your ass, Junior Fez. You have legs. Look at him. He's all fucking choked up. He's ready to fucking spit some tears out. One and eight. Slow walking fuck. Say the word and we'll do the fire on him. Someone wrote to me that I'm fire crazy lately. Because yesterday I, I said I went to fire you, yeah. Travis, and him. All on the same day. Don't fire me. I didn't even think you liked working here. You told me a lot of times <laughs> you didn't like working here. So you don't like the bosses and what they do is shitty. <laughs> what? No, what? I've never said anything. You say what you have to do to get ahead fucking amazes you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I agree with you. I don't know why you're saying no. Let's hear the Let Go song again. That was really nice. I forgot all about it. That Frozen's very popular. Oh, yeah. It's been number one for three years running now. What the fuck? I'm gonna let it go. Let it go. I don't give a shit anymore. Let it go. Let it go. When you call me a dumb cut or whore. I don't care what your dumb fans say on your message boards. I'm less of a bitch than Fez anyway. She had a really good voice. 
I didn't realize it was her the first time I played. I was like, who, who's this? Who's a singer? She mm. fucking killed it. You add a lot when you throw in fucking nonsensical stuff like that. It really helps out. Uh, Jeff, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, back in 88 or 90 sometime, a local radio station, I just heard him say, call in to win tickets, so I called in. Turns out it was the Pesh Mode tickets. At the time, all I listened to was ACDC. I had no idea who they were, so I let them go unused. Later on, I found out, and it's the greatest regret of my life. Yeah, this isn't a very, like, uh, great regrets. Um, by the way, that happens with a lot of people when they win tickets. They just never show up for them. Some people just like to fucking call in. And when? They like to answer questions. Look at him storm back in here. You know your problem with this fucking kid? What's that? A, you've untrained him. B, he gets in the back of his mind he's an equal. Like, oh, I deserve this spot that I'm at. Oh, yeah, everybody else here has been doing this fucking work as long as I've been alive. But I'll walk slow and fucking not give a shit. There's a weird cockiness. Yeah. I gotta tell you yesterday, kid... You really let me down by fucking playing to the fear thing. I, fuck I, don't, like the, I don't like how you're comfortable just sitting and watching. It fucking bothers me. I don't want to say who you emulate, but it fucking it tugs at me a little bit. I gave you the big shot yesterday, the big shot to go for. And here's what it reminds me of. A, f a guy goes up to the plate, he swings twice... And he goes, oh, fuck it. Let's the third pitch just go by him. But then he's showing up the next day like this, like not even a look. This thing that happened to me yesterday is destroying me, and I want to talk to you about it. He's just okay with it. Fucking talking about Joe Buck like something didn't happen. It's like if you almost saw a guy blowing a dog, and then later you talk to him, and he's like, why is everybody always busting on Joe Buck? He's a pretty good announcer. You know you fucking ate dog cum. I'd rather see him blowing a fucking dog. But, you know, everyone says around here whatever they want about Dave. That fucking guy would run through a fucking wall when he was given an opportunity. Every single chance. Yeah. Unfortunately, he ran through too many walls. Now he's fucking run through walls with fucking carrying you, fireman style. So you actually work for that kid, the Chris, that was in here? I don't work for him, but we're on the same podcasting well, network. Well, he runs the network, you said. So, yeah, I guess technically he would be my boss. <laughs> so don't fuck up with him. I'm, I'm trying not to. He finished tied for first. Were you embarrassed with Howard's? Howard's, like, lived a good life. Yeah, I mean, Jesus. I, fig I figured he had some STD stories in him. No. You could have probably won this. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking, I like Plantera. I love Robert Rodriguez. I love that prize. Hey, Ian, you're on the Run of Fez show. Ian. Hey. Yeah. Where are all the ladies? What can we do for you? Uh, I have a story, and I'm really embarrassed that I'm the only lady that I apparently have a story. Go ahead. Uh, I used to work with my girlfriend at a golf course, and we used to take tag team turns blowing up the chef that was in charge. Why would you do that? Uh, one would watch and one would blow. <laughs> but why? For fun. <laughs> but what's so fun about giving oral to well, someone? Well, job on the job while you're serving people at a function. Hello. It was so fun. Hello. Hello. <laughs> it's so much fun to blow someone when someone's in the other room. Like, if she came in and said I got fucking nailed, I'd be like, okay, she's well, getting something. Well, he was something. huge, so. Yeah. All right. Well, you yeah. took on the chef. It's great for you. Used to blow a chef. Superstar. That's terrific. Um, here's Jason. You're on the Run Fest show. Hey, Ronnie. Okay. Yeah, I had my cousin. We went down to the south side of Chicago back oh, in the late 90s, and uh, he wanted to cop some brother. And we picked everything up, and got leaving, got back to the hotel room. I convinced him that he lost my works out of the car. Because uh, you know, I had it in the, in the by the seat, you know. Yeah. And uh, had him going back, walking, like four miles on the south side, looking around for my shit while we're back in the hotel room doing it. Oh, that's fucked. <laughs> you know, like yeah. you're with bad fucking people too. When you you're worried that the fucking package is gonna get fucked with while you're taking a piss. <laughs> and that's sometimes that's fiends. Yeah, yeah. That's when you're a fiend, or you're fucking with someone else's package. 
Howard's definitely the nicest out of all the people here. I mean, I knew I was a scumbag. Howard's last name should probably be Nygaard, and sooner or later, you're going to find out he's got a fucking hammer down in the basement next to his wife's head. <laughs> Fuck, I forgot. You guys don't even watch. No. Oh. I don't watch it. Discussing it with the wrong dudes. Remember yesterday when we all said we were starting a club? Yeah. You didn't come through? I didn't come through for the Fargo Club. How about you, warm up? Did you come through? Did not. Mm. You want to do the warm up for the ONA event? Yeah, I thought probably better not to. <laughs> That's the kind yeah. of balls I'd like to see. You know what I mean? Probably better not to. Pay me for nothing. Uh, here's uh, Josh. You're on the Run of Fez show. What's going on, Ryan? Yeah. So, um, my wife was prescribed Ambien, and while she was on it, she was doing like crazy shit, cleaning the house, we're not even knowing it. One time I woke up, her giving me head, so she stopped taking it. So I started slipping it to her so she would do anal with me. Yeah, I think you did all you had to, you could possibly do. Uh, Don, you're on the Run of Fed show. Hey, a million bucks, right? A million bucks. Hey, when I was going to college, I worked as a paramedic. And uh, we come in every morning, just, you know, college kids, we're just fucked up every morning. You know, start our shift. We would hold back meds from heart attack victims or whoever just to get us through the day. We never kill anybody, but we, we give them just enough to keep them up, above board. But the rest of us went, not, went into our pockets, you know, just to stay alive. You know, I, I feel kind of bad, but we never killed anybody. So I think I got some involvement on that, don't I? You know what? As long as you say you didn't kill anybody, into the finals. Uh, Mike, you're on the Run of Fest show. How's it going, Ronnie? Hey. So I was about 16. Me and my girlfriend got shit face drunk. Uh, she passed out on the couch, and uh, I had a thing for her younger sister, uh, who was like 13 at the time. And uh, we ended up fucking on the couch, uh, the other couch, about 10 feet away from uh, my girlfriend, passed out drunk. Oh, God. Uh, 13 is what fucking throws me off. I'm going to take your number just in case the police want it. <laughs> why, would you, why would you laugh? Why is he laughing? It's <laughs> a 13 year old brother. All right, we're going to. When did you, you turn 70s black? <laughs> I don't understand that. Throw out some jive talk. Yeah. Um, let's uh, break here. We'll be back in a minute. I'll have Chris, you on your own. We'll pick out who the winner is. All right. And then I'm going to say, oh, my God, you picked the worst person. No. you have been the other ones. You're not this time. You're not. Okay. Uh, right back with that. Hey, this time tomorrow, we'll be prepping and getting ready for the ONA on Mass, the 105th on Mass. That was a great episode 100. You remember what it was, Chris? David Steinberg. Ah, one of my all-time favorites still. David Steinberg. Uh, we'll be right back. Ron and Fez show. Ron and Fez on Raw Dog.